Mr. here, D-Lab, got home and look what was waiting for me, a PV Classic 30. This one's been in the shop a couple times over the years. It's actually been a really good amp. However, the owner is having a intermittent issue. He'll play it for eight hours straight and it worked great. Then they'll go to play it and it's dead. Well, I've got the back opened and the first thing I see is the output tubes are not lighting. So let's check it out. Here's the situation. If you take a look close, you can see the filaments are on on the 12AX7 tubes, but the 6BQ5s are stone cold. No filaments. And that would answer why this thing completely goes dead. No output, because the output tubes aren't on, right? So, we're going to have to open it up and inspect the circuit board for cracks. Maybe there's a current limiting resistor that's open. Whatever it is, it should be minor because this is an intermittent issue. So I've opened up the amp and the first thing I spotted, take a look at these diodes here. You can see they've been a little warm. The adhesive is kind of discolored. There's some jumper wires here and those go to these little 3 ohm resistors. And those resistors are in series with the filament voltage going to just the 6BQ5s. So, with all this heating that we see here, and we also got these big, uh, you know, wire-wound resistors that are famous for developing bad connections, it's probably right here. So let's flip it on, and I'm going to kind of poke around, and we'll see if those filaments come on. All right, I've killed the lights in the shop, and you guys get to focus on the tubes, and I'm going to be back here on the circus board moving things, and we'll see if I can find this intermittent connection. Oh, look at there. They came on already, of course. Now, I was in here looking around and I moved one little wire. It appeared to be loose. I'm playing with it. It'd be nice if I could get this thing to die again. Then I'd know for sure, wouldn't I? Alright. Well, of course, it's going to play games with me. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I had the area when I opened it up and touched those wires, I interrupted it. So let's get in here and buzz it out with a meteoroid, see if we can spot it. Well, I was really hoping to catch that on video so you guys could see it come to life but that's the way my luck usually runs but what I see here is this wire right there and he appears to be slightly loose this is a jumper wire here that had been installed in the past because one of these broke right and then we have the wire wound resistors here and we have the plugs that are plugging in for the filament power so I'm going to have to get in here and try to inspect these connections and see if I can spot a crack. But the first ones I suspect is this guy. This guy appears to be loose. See how easily it moves in that connection? So let me get a meter on here and see if we can catch that. So I found the culprit. You see that 13.9 ohms on my meter? I'm actually measuring from that resistor to that diode and that would normally be connected by this little jumper wire right so watch when I move this little jumper look at there see she dove down back up my toothpicks giving out on me there it is there is good continuity and I can make it fail so we have a bad solder connection where this little jumper is joining that PCB over to this PCB. So what's the best way to fix it? You'd say, well, maybe you should just re-solder the connection. Nope. What I'm going to do is run a hard jumper from that resistor over to that diode on top of the board. And that would be a much better and more robust way of fixing that connection than this little crappy jumper. So here's a close-up. There's a little jumper that's loose. Okay. Feeds these resistoroids over here, right? Goes over here 
and it's going to a foil that is connected to this diode. Now you can see all this nice adhesive that they put in there to make this a pain in the butt. So I'm going to have to dig out the adhesive, right? Then I'm going to have to clean this lead here real well, throw some rosin on it, and we'll put a nice jumper from there to there. And that should solve it. Alright, so the bypass operation is almost complete. Rather than using this little jumper, now we have a direct jumper going from these resistors over to these diodes. These two diodes are connected together with a foil underneath, so I'm going to solder my jumper to both of those leads plus the resistor for a good connection. So let's get that soldered up and then we'll test it. So by the way, I used some 20 gauge solid conductor wire. I cleaned these leads using an X-Acto knife to rough them up and then I put rosin on them, some liquid rosin to make sure to get a very good connection. The worst part of this whole operation is getting that old adhesive off the board. Other than that, this should work just great. Here we go, powering it up. got lights. Alright, let's get this thing together and test it. Alright, well the PV Classic 30 is alive again. Until the next circuit board bag connection happens, which unfortunately they always do. So what's the cost for this repair? Nothing. And here's why guys. Some of you have been donating to D-Lab lately, which is very much appreciated and allows me to do simple repairs like this for nothing. A couple of the recent ones has been Joe and Dave. I really appreciate it, guys. And if the rest of you would like to help out D-Lab, check out dlabelectronics.com. And I'm also on reverb.com. And guess what? There's a little donation button. So you hit that, you support me, and you support other artists that do what you do. Thanks.